So while everyone's been battling it out for a trip to the conference finals this past weekend, one team has just been chilling at home, you know, enjoying their time, trying to get healthy, and that team is the Boston Celtics. Best team in the regular season, so far the best team in the playoffs, besides two dud games in the first two rounds, they've been extremely dominant. Maybe it's their year, but I have some doubts. Before we start talking about the Celtics, if you haven't already, make sure to leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So there were a couple of teams that made some big moves this past offseason. The Suns, they brought in Bradley Beal to form their big three. The Bucks, of course, traded for Dame. He finally left Portland. And then the Celtics, they brought in Drew Holiday and Chris Stops Porzingis. Just another masterclass offseason from this front office who has been doing it basically for the past 10 years. So they were already one of the best teams in the league. They made the conference finals this past year. They made the finals two years ago. And it felt like this current core had kind of peaked with like Marcus Smart and the two J's, but bringing in two veterans who one of them has championship experience, two star level players to pair around Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Just an amazing off season once again from this Boston Celtics team. And another reason for Heat fans to hate Joe Cronin. He yeah, sent, exactly. sent Dame off to Milwaukee, not to Miami, and then sent Drew Holiday off to Boston. Just very much strengthened or seemingly strengthened two of their direct competitors. <laughs> and honestly, I love him for that. Immediately, this team was dominant. They started 20 and 5 through the first 25 games. That was even with Derek White, Drew Holiday, and Porzingis missing a couple games. They extended it to 43 and 12 at the All Star break. There was a stretch between early February to late March where they were 20 and 2, and ultimately they'd finish the season 64 and 18. That was tied with the 2022 Suns for the best record since the 2018 Rockets. And I really don't think we talk about just how dominant this team was, at least during the regular season. They had the second Second most made threes by a team in a season. Only Golden State last year made more. Had the most 50 plus point wins in a season with three. Tied for the most 40 point wins. They were tied with the Thunder. Had the most 30 point wins since the 1972 Bucks. Fourth highest net rating ever. Only teams that were better. 2017 Warriors, 97 Bulls, 96 Bulls. All those teams obviously ended the year lifting the trophy. Also had the highest offensive rating this year. Third highest defensive rating. Statistically, they had an all time great season. I mean, yeah, this starting five was just so serious seamless together and we're talking about one of the better starting fives in NBA history. I know like 2017 Warriors had the star power, obviously 96 Bulls. There's other teams with better starting fives. You could even argue Denver is still better as a starting five, but god damn, this team, you, you look at the stats, you look at the numbers. I know the Eastern Conference is weak, but just absolutely historic stuff from them. And in the playoffs this year, they've been just as dominant. They just really haven't been tested. In the first round, they match up with the Miami Heat, which could have been like a very, very intriguing matchup, a rematch of the conference finals last year, a series that went seven games. But Jimmy Butler was unfortunately out after he got injured in the play-in. And the Celtics, besides game two, just kind of easily handled things. In game one, they started up 14-0. The Heat would respond. They would make it close. Ahame Haka's layup cut the lead down to three early in the second quarter, but then the Celtics just responded with a barrage of threes. They hit 22 threes, they'd never trail, and they won the game 114-94 to go up 1-0 in the series. And then they came out in game two and just got shocked. I mean, look, the Heat hit 23 threes, third most ever by a team in a playoff game. Tyler Hero was looking like Magic Johnson out there, 14 <laughs> assists. Caleb Martin was having flashbacks to when people thought he was going to be Eastern Conference Finals MVP. And again, like Boston, you have the best record in the league. You have this all-time historical season. And then you're at home dropping a game two to Miami without Jimmy Butler. It's like, I can't fully embrace this team because of bullshit like this. I mean, for some reason, like at home in the playoffs, they their averages f they are average. I don't get it. Whatever. But again, on the road, they are a great road team. In game three, in game four in Miami, they were just dominant. In game three, they came out just completely destroying the heat. A Tatum three early in the second quarter gave him a 30 to 12 lead. Chris Stops was much better this game after he was just straight ass in game two. And they did a great job of limiting three pointers for the heat. After they hit 23 in game two, they were nine to 28 this game. And in game four, this was just 
straight up the Derek White game. Dude was playing like Steph Curry out there. Was 38 points, eight threes. Was playing better than Steph Curry because he was actually locking dudes up on the other end. Only big negative for the Celtics though was they obviously, they lost Porzingis. He suffered a calf injury near the end of the first half. Not back yet. And apparently he's not going to be back until like midway through the conference finals. So big loss right there, but they would go on to win game four anyway. 102-88, they go up 3-1. Going back to Boston, took a huge lead after the first quarter, 41-23. Derek White, 15 points by himself in the first. Game was never close. Celtics won 118-84. It's just... Ugh, I it's game two. I can't, I can't get over it. Yeah. I mean, but if you have one dud in a series and you dominate the other games, all you need to do is win four. So that's what they did. Again, the Heat team without Jimmy Butler really had no chance. So they advanced the second round to match up against the Cavs. A Cavs team coming off a seven game series versus the Magic. So, you know, they were going to be a little bit gassed. And this series was very similar to round one for the Celtics. And game one, come out straight, just hot as hell. 12-2 lead. Cavs, just like the Heat kind of did, would respond and they actually took the lead near the middle of the third but once again the Celtics would respond back Derek White Jalen Brown and Tatum combined for 75 and they won 120-95 but another just dud of a game too I, I don't get it I mean Cleveland did a great job limiting Boston's three-point shooting which is their biggest strength I mean they only had eight threes on 35 attempts Evan Mobley had the best game of his playoff career after Brian Windhorst called his ass out earlier <laughs> in the day kind of unprompted right. too it's so I, random I, I don't get why I mean I know he hasn't developed quite like maybe everyone thought he would like he came into the league everyone was like oh he's gonna be the next like Chris Bosh and he's kind of stagnated but damn Brian it worked gangbusters apparently though Donovan Mitchell also showed up big time in the second half put the Celtics away but again like they go back on the road and they're phenomenal on the road I don't get it yeah I really don't get it like game three was so hyped up like I was ready as a hate watcher for the Celtics to be like okay can Donovan Mitchell like do it again and Mitchell was solid but Tatum and Brown combined for 61 Drew Holiday after it was looking like oh was that maybe a bad contract extension he was great had his best playoff game for the celtics thus far they won comfortably 106 93 then we got the news that donovan mitchell would be out with a calf strain for game four kind of put an end to the series like celtics were already the big favorites without donovan mitchell Cavs can't do much i mean credit to them they kept things close without mitchell the celtics just pulled away in the third again though they keep it close when mitchell's not there like I mean, that's all you can do. You're playing who you play. They took care of business. They won 109-102 to force a closeout game back in Boston. Once again, Donovan Mitchell's out for game five. So I don't think anyone's given the Cavs a chance. But I mean, the Cavs, they did kind of keep things close because Marcus Morris came off the bench and gave him 25. That was so random. I mean, if they have Donovan Mitchell and Marcus Morris does that, they might win. They might have. Instead, they lose by 15. <laughs> yeah. So even without Kristaps Porzingis missing most of the series, the Celtics, they just had too much firepower. Six players scored in double figures. Shout out Peyton Pritchard, the guy from West Lynn, Oregon. He's been balling out hey, for them thus far. don't forget the former Oregon Duck. Well, I knew that, but I wasn't <laughs> going to mention it. That's why I'm here. So now the Celtics advance to the conference finals. So we're recording this part right after the Knicks Pacers game. Unfortunately, my Knicks went down. Now the Pacers are going to match up with the Celtics. I'm not giving the Pacers a chance at all. Like, I don't want to hate on the Pacers. Shout out Pacers fans. Shout out Tyrese Halliburton, all that. Like, fantastic season. And who knows? I mean, they made it to the conference finals. No one expected that. But I'm saying Boston 5. I'm sorry. Crazier things have happened. Yeah, the, the I heat, guess. Heat beat the Celtics in the conference finals last year. Yeah. Maybe Tyrese Halliburton goes full playoff Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that. Not in your first playoffs. Like, come on. He's been great, but first playoffs, they did split the season series 2-2, but uh, Boston also did blow them out by 50 at the beginning of the season, so. Well, that was a long time ago. I mean, my thing is, like, the Pacers can shoot the lights out. They have a great offense. Celtics also have a great offense, can also shoot the lights out, and they can also play defense, which the Pacers cannot do. Cool. Pacers in seven. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Stop it. it. That's more hope than uh, than brains right there. <laughs> now, if the Boston Celtics do make the NBA Finals, we don't know who they would play in this hypothetical matchup, but you gotta say Dallas is the much better matchup for them. They have the perimeter guys to throw out Luke and Kyrie, and the Timberwolves present that challenge of like a heavy front court with Gobert, Nas, Reed, and Cat. We just saw what they did to the Nuggets. So I think the Celtics either way would most likely win, but I think Dallas, I'm much more comfortable in saying the Timberwolves series that would be a toss-up to me oh mj son versus walmart kobe yeah. 
Yeah. That'd be a series for the ages. That's the series I want. I want to see Ant against the Celtics. That'd be fun. I agree with you. I think Dallas is the better matchup from the Celtics perspective. Boy, I'm rooting hard for Minnesota, though. That, that sounds like a fun matchup. That's the video, guys. Do you think the Celtics are going to win it all this year? Love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.